Olha. Rashid Delay, Your Holiness, and good morning. It's an absolute honor to welcome you. Wait, 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 wait. Hello, hello, hello. Looking right screen, they might have it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Dashi your holiness. And good morning. Dashi Delek, your holiness, and good morning. Okay. Can you hear me, Your Holiness? Thank you, yes. Good morning, Your Holiness. It's an absolute honor to welcome you. And we thank you warm-heartedly for kindly accepting our invitation. I feel most humbled and grateful to host this Be the Love for One Better World conversation with you and 12 global change makers. My name is Sophia Srilrever. I'm a Sanskrit scholar and a writer based in Paris, co-founder with Koa Nguyen of Be the Love and Better We, Better World under the guidance of Professor Sandon Grimpouché. I was graced to co-author four books with you, translated into more than 20 languages, including Chinese. Your Holiness, we are meeting in the midst of a world pandemic, exacerbated social inequalities and ecological collapse. Solving these global problems is actually within our reach under the 17 SDGs of the United Nations a program of universal responsibility in action. Humankind today does have the resources to care for every single person, as well as the skills to regenerate Mother Earth. Even if individually and collectively, we still lack the necessary willpower to implement existing solutions. There's a growing awareness that the key to a sustainable future is altruism, focusing on collaboration over competition, which dramatically increases people's well being as a whole. This is consistent with scientific evidence that the human brain is primarily social and empathic. Civilization didn't start with technology, but with love, care, and mutual aid. Although underestimated, these values are the core of our modern societies, as highlighted during the ongoing pandemic by the key contribution of nurses, doctors, and all professionals taking care of others. Your Holiness, this is also consistent with your most relevant teachings on altruistic love, which is the base of Haksam or universal responsibility. Mahatma Gandhi used to say, be the change you want to see in the world. In this new decade, I'm responding him, be the love you want to see in the world. Your Holiness, to introduce this conversation, my question is, could you please share with us how in this 21st century, altruistic love 
is a realistic way to heal our divisions and move towards global peace, justice, responsibility, and the happiness we all aspire to. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Now, I'm uh, uh, 88 years old. Six. Ka. 86. Ka. 86. Ka. 86. Uh, 86 years old. Uh, this is my lifetime. The world, First World War, Second World War, uh, and then on location, uh, killing, a lot of sort of killing. Wow. So now, what really result from this tremendous violence? More suffering, more hatred here. I always you see, admire the spirit of European Union. In the past, these, uh, these member states fighting, particularly Germany and French. But then after the Second World War, you see, they uh, realized you see, uh, concerning, I mean, consider as an enemy, your neighbor. It is, uh, what's it, uh, no use. Germany, French, through centuries, arch enemy. But then, according to circumstances, De Gaulle, uh, Adana, you see, they take initiative, uh, mainly French and Germany, and set up European Union. It is really wonderful how many people killed through centuries uh, among these member states. Then, you see, new circumstances, you see, they consider, I mean, they realize new circumstances, and then they develop European Union. So now, that, you see, concept, uh, carrying that concept or uh, admirer of that sort of uh, concept, or European Union. Now I always feel now whole Europe, I mean the whole world, east, west, south, north, we all are part of the humanity. Uh, we have to think about the humanity, about the world. Now today's world no longer sort of thinking my nation, my continent. No. No. Because the reality, everything interconnected. Uh, for example, global uh, economy. And then also now, one new thing is global warming. So now, uh, such sort of period no longer thinking my nation, my continent, no. Now we have to think humanity about the world. So, uh, now, on the basis, now we should not think my nation, my people, no. We should think about world, uh, about humanity. So, deeper level, we all same human being, a little different color, 
or different physical shape. Otherwise, it's the same. Emotion or consciousness or brain, same. And the reality, now we have to live together on this planet. Now time come, we should think about humanity, about world. Uh, no longer talking my nation, my nation, like that. So uh, my commitment is promotion of sense of oneness of s seven billion human beings. Uh, when I was in Tibet, we feel Tibetan, Tibetan. Uh, now, after we came to India, meet different people, different religious group, uh, and then uh, I realized we are the same. Uh, unless some gods and goddesses, third, third eye, uh, someone who came uh, with third eye, then we feel, oh, something different. Otherwise, you see, we are the same human being. So uh, now, uh, most important, now we have to think about the world, about the humanity. Now, no longer thinking my nation, my nation. So that's unrealistic. Although in the past, you see some uh, different ideology, different system, uh, on, on, on with with consider oneness of human being. Hmm? Now still, we need more effort to promote sense of oneness and work together. Uh, different nation, different religion is secondary. Now, top most important, we have to think about humanity, about the world, like that. So that's my main, I'll say, uh, main belief and also main commitment, promotion of oneness of humanity, like that. So you, yeah, our friend, uh, I hope. Uh, I feel, you see, you also, you see, should join me, promotion of the sense of oneness of human being, one world, uh, you see, different nation, uh, which, you see, we develop, I, my nation, my nation, uh, and also religion, my religion, my religion. I think that's, I feel outdated. Now we should think about humanity, about world religion. And religion is a personal matter. Basically, all religion carry it's the same message, loving kindness, uh, in spite of different philosophy. So there is ground. Different rich people can live together. India is one example. In this country, all world major religions live together. No problem. Uh, in India, I have a lot of Muslim, my friend, Indian Muslim, Shia and Sunni. I never heard complain Shia and Sunni. The next, uh, our neighbor is Shia and Sunni, and because of the different sort of name, or maybe a little different sort of concept, and fighting, killing. So now, uh, it is possible, look India, over a thousand years, all major religious traditions live together, mutual respect, mutual learning. So religious harmony is possible. India, uh, I think, the second most populated nation. 
Uh, but as far as religion is concerned, you see, very, very harmony, mutual respect, mutual learning. So that's my, uh, another my commitment, promotion of religious harmony. So my friend, please think and as much as you can to help to build happy world, happy humanity. Okay. Now questions or argument. Since my childhood, you see, I train, we train argument. <laughs> I, I have a question, His Holiness. Yes. My name is Michael. They call me Killer Mike. It's an honor to be on here with you today. I have looked at a lot of religions and I've looked at a lot of great and noble men in my life and women. And what I wish to know is why in this physical realm, fear seems to reign supreme when love has consistently shown itself a more powerful agent for the change and betterment of all. Why does fear in human beings so often which leads to violence and famine and plague, why does it so often trump or beat love when we know love across all religious systems is a more powerful agent for change? I think uh, in the past, uh, in the past, you see, we are thinking naturally, you see, limited uh, group, my nation, uh, also my religion. Now that thinking, out of date it. Now we should think about world. Uh, because of that, United Nations develop. So now, the, uh, the according reality, now we have to think about Humanity, uh, humanity, happy, uh, peaceful, and each individual nation automatically get benefit. Other hand, just emphasis, one's own nation, one's own religious group, uh, I say without thinking, humanity, then, uh, uh, Although you see the thinking yourself, the more sort of sense of concern about your own sort of uh, nation, your own community, but that narrow minded thinking. Now we must think according to the reality. So, reality, same one world, same world. So, now. Uh, time come, according to reality, we have to uh, promote concept of oneness and also religion, all inspired in different philosophy, different history, but all carry the same message, message of love, message of forgiveness, like that. Thank you, Your Holiness. I appreciate Thank you. it. Your Holiness, I just wanted to, to thank you for, for sharing your wisdom. Uh, you truly are a source of hope and inspiration at a time uh, when many are suffering and are, are shaken. Um, never has there been a more critical and urgent time for the world to unite around love especially and to set aside political, religious, and other differences. Today, all who are gathered here at this meeting with you share the same belief. We've all come at the invitation of Sophia and her Be the Love program and our organization, One Better World Collective, which now represents over 50 nations on seven continents and focuses on creating powerful and purposeful collaborations amongst global change makers through a relational heart-to-heart -heart approach. And together we're working 
to build a world free of poverty and hunger and suffering of every kind and to promote universal responsibility and mindfulness. We work with leaders of all ages, even as young as 13 years old, who you'll meet today. And humbly, Your Holiness, we come to you for guidance as we seek to touch the hearts of humanity with higher wisdom. Your Holiness, today you will meet three groups and three individuals who will be asking you a question. Yes. I'll begin by introducing you to group number one, our young activists. They will introduce themselves in this order. Vivian Har, Raheen Fatima, and Clover Hogan. And Clover will then ask a question on behalf of her group. Yes, good. Vivian? Yes. Hello, um, my name is Vivian Har. I am the CEO at Ladata Tree, a youth-led movement to plant and protect 7 million trees along the Great Green Wall in Africa. And I'm so happy and so honored to be here with these inspiring people and with you, Your Holiness, as you guide us on our journey to a more unified and a better world. Thank you so much for having me. Raheen. Hello. Hello, my name is Raheen Fatima. I am 13 years old and I'm from Pakistan. I am a stand-up comedian, writer, entrepreneur, teacher, interviewer, and a theater actress. And the goal of my life is to empower everybody around me, careless of their race, religion, caste, or creed, in order to achieve world peace. Thank you. Good. Uh, Your Holiness, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, my name is Clover Hogan. I am a 21-year-old climate activist and the founder and executive director of Force of Nature, a youth nonprofit mobilizing mindsets for climate action. My catalyst came at the age of 11 when I first started watching documentaries that showed how we were destroying the earth and ourselves. In the decades since, I have worked alongside the world's leading authorities on sustainability, in the boardrooms of Fortune 500 companies, and supported students in over 50 countries to realize their power as change makers. Working in boardrooms and classrooms alike, I have realized that the threat even greater than the climate crisis is how powerless we feel in the face of it. Concerned moms and dads, anxious 11-year-olds, and cautious corporate leaders. Often we are afraid to take responsibility for this crisis and for our actions because it feels so enormous and we feel so small in the face of it. We assume someone else will fix the problem, someone with more influence, knowledge, or power Yet I believe that our power lies in assuming responsibility. This is something that all of the world's great movers and shakers have known to be true, yourself included. None of them were born leaders. They simply decided to make themselves personally responsible. Now, my question for you, Your Holiness, on behalf of us all, you have spoken to this idea of universal responsibility. We would love to know, when did you decide to make yourself personally responsible? And in taking responsibility, how did you realize your own power to create change? Thank you. Mm. <clears throat> now, uh, of course, uh, I'm a religious person uh, from childhood, you see, uh, training. Uh, we always say entire sentient being, entire sentient being. Then uh, after reach India, as I briefly mentioned earlier, 
before reach India, you see, we little bit sort of, or say the sense of we Tibetan, Tibetan, Tibetan like that. Then eventually come India and meet different people and uh, not only Indian, but also, you see, uh, people from different parts of the world. You see, I often have the opportunity meeting. Then uh, we all uh, same human being, physically, mentally, emotionally. And then uh, look our history. You see, same human being, but too much sort of division, and as I briefly mentioned. So that causing more problem. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of violence. Now, ancient time, people's mind, very narrow-minded. Only your own circle, your own sort of country, like that. Now, today, 21st century, you see, we have to, th as I briefly already mentioned, we have to think about humanity rather than my nation, my nation. So uh, that uh, our practice thinking entire sentient being, now practical level, uh, entire human being uh, on this planet, now we have to live together uh, or on the on on the con concept of oneness of human seven billion human being. So that's realistic and immense benefit. My sort of own sort of little experience with the sense of oneness of human being, wherever I go, I always see feel another human being, another human being. Uh, whether in Europe, whether in Latin America or America, everywhere. You see the, the sense of oneness of human being that really liberate narrow-minded thinking. So, so our, our practice, entire sentient being, same, now, on a practical level, at least humanity on this planet, we are same, we have to live together. Uh, and within humanity, uh, due to different factor, and we and the day is outdated and a source of problem. Okay. Thank you. Your Holiness, <clears throat> our next guest has um, undergone throat surgery. <clears throat> Excuse me. Her name is Beatrice Martin, and she's also known to French-speaking audiences as Coeur de Pirate. Um, because of the throat surgery, she wasn't able to be with us on the Zoom call this evening, but we have a recording of her question for you, which will appear on your screen, and uh, her question will will appear as a video recording. Hi, my name is Beatrice Martin, otherwise known as Carol de Pirat, and I am a Francophone singer. Um, I have a question for you today regarding, you know, the fact that women take more and more place in this world and in positions of leadership. Um, but I'm guessing that we still have a long way to come towards equality. Your Holiness, my question for you today is, how can we encourage more equality? As I mentioned earlier, uh, basically we all same human being. And then within, within that, 
male and a female. You see these? You see little differences and whether God's creation or, or karmic creation. So thousand years male and female there. You see, without a male and a female, no longer human being. <laughs> so now uh, in I say the, I say, in the past, uh, even I think today, sometimes you see uh, on the basis of uh, different sources, I mean, I mean, male and female. I think the society where only think about I say the uh, ability or doing something and mainly labor. So uh, female, physically, little weaker. So then through that way, eventually you see develop some kind of discrimination uh, on, the, on, the, on, on the physical, uh, male and female. Now here, Buddha give us same right, male and the female. So again, you see, on thinking more narrow-minded, then male more hardworking, female less. Uh, but then basically now today, uh, as far as intelligence is concerned, same on brain, no differences and mental sort of ability, no differences. Even in some cases, female more sharpening their mind. So now uh, we need we need more effort, complete equal male and female, like that. So these, uh, due to religious belief and due to certain sort of uh, traditional sort of way of thinking and some discrimination. Now these are uh, outdated. Now we should think uh, more realistic, more wider way think. So, uh, and then frankly, uh, male need female, female need male. <laughs> so we should be very, very equal. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, Your Holiness. That was a wonderful response to that question. We have three very inspirational women leaders next. Uh, they will introduce themselves in this order. There's Mojda Jamalzada, Stephanie Benedetto, and Susan Rockefeller. Now, Susan will ask the question on behalf of her group. Mojda. Your Holiness, um, it's an honor to be in your presence. My name is Mojda Jamalzada. I'm an Afghan Canadian singer, talk show host, and women's rights activist in my war-torn country of birth, Afghanistan. I have been an avid follower of your teachings. You promote inner peace and a sense of oneness among all humans. My nation has never been more divided and mentally exhausted and distraught. I know your teachings would be a great value to the people of my country and allowing me to be a part of this event, maybe that will bring more awareness to the people of Afghanistan. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Okay. No question. Your holy. I'm on a mission to solve the world's water crisis. By reducing textile waste, we have already saved over 1 billion gallons of water. 
That's enough clean water for 1.4 million people to drink around the world for three years. I'm doing this for my children. Hmm. I want them to have clean water to drink, clothes that aren't toxic to wear, and a planet to live on. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you. My name is Stephanie Benedetto, and I'm the queen of raw. Thank you. You're who we are. I am so deeply grateful to be in your virtual presence and for all the love and joy and compassion you bring to our world. My name is Susan Rockefeller, and my work is to lead with love, art, and philanthropy to help restore our soils, our oceans, and each other so that all life has the possibility to thrive. I love to paint, make films, and profile leaders through my digital magazine, Musings, that inspire ideas, beauty, and action for a better world. As women influencers brought together by Be the Love and One Better World Collective, we celebrate the divine feminine that lives in all of us and embodies much needed empathy for all sentient beings. The divine feminine is a mysterious and sacred source of healing and nurturing and consciousness that we believe can help us understand our interconnectedness and help us to imagine a new way forward. And as you said earlier, with a sense of oneness and loving kindness. Your Holiness, you say you are wholeheartedly a feminist. Our question is this, how can your teachings help women and men to care for themselves, others, and the earth? Thank you so much. My main <coughs> interest or concern is, you see, compassion, warm-heartedness. Even physically, as soon as we are born, mother take full care. Father occasionally come, otherwise you see, uh, at, at the physically, biologically, mother have this milk. Child, as soon as you're born, then milk from mother's or say the milk. That sort of nature. Uh, so our life begin as soon as born, uh, mother's love, mother's taking care. Even other animals also, mother always taking care. And then some scientists say, uh, female, male, when face, when seeing some sort of uh, picture or suffering, something, the female, the physically also, you see, more response. Uh, so female, by nature, more compassionate. So now, uh, we really uh, uh, need female should be more active. So some leaders, uh, the female, really wonderful. <coughs> Sometimes I feel, and also I, some occasion I express, the world leader majority become female, I think world safer. Oh. So like now Norway Prime Minister. Norway, Norway. New Zealand. Ha. New Zealand. Ha. New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh New Zealand. And also now more female leaders now come. 
it is very uh, significant. Uh, the world leader eventually, the majority become female, then world more safer. I really feel. So now female, and in the past, you see, male dominant, female, or uh, I say, less, less dominant. Ka. Less dominant. Ka. Inferior. Oh. So that's uh, ancient backward thinking. Now today, firstly, we all human being same right, and then female by physically uh, more compassionate. So now female should take more responsibility. I feel that. Uh, and uh, you see, a few years ago, even you say I express the in case Dalai Lama institution should continue, then the future Dalai Lama could be female Dalai Lama. <laughs> I, I express that way. So female now should take more active role to promote human compassion, like that. OK. Thank you, Your Holiness. Our next guest is a very inspirational woman, known as a peace activist for decades, has really motivated the world to action. Very honored to have her here with us this evening. Uh, Your Holiness, it's my honor to introduce to you Buffy St. Marie. Thank you. Your Holiness, I'm so grateful that you share yourself with us today. Thank you. I'm a songwriter and a teacher, and I have a diverse international life. My concerts are on the shiny stages of show business, but my free time and my heart is with the indigenous forgotten people of the world, the indigenous people. In the Americas for centuries, the enslavement of indigenous women and girls has been kept quiet, beginning long before and continuing long after the enslavement of African people was ended. But this isn't taught in our schools. It's seldom mentioned in the news. And it's a low priority for governments. Your Holiness, my question is this. How can we compassionately confront misogyny? All this education, education, and some sort of tradition, a female or uh, little lower, or uh, that kind of thinking must change. So, uh, as I already mentioned, now more leaders uh, from female uh, should come and then show the world female more compassionate. So therefore, uh, the uh, I say, in order to achieve uh, peaceful world, the female should take more active. So that also then uh, through education. Uh, thousand years, you see, we usually male superior, female more lower. Now that old thinking, now that must change through education. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. Um, now is the opportunity to meet three powerful activists, one you've already met. As a matter of fact, they'll introduce themselves in this order. 
Shoot Tezcat, Massey White Knife, and Emmanuel Jowl. And Jowl will ask the question on behalf of his group. Shoot Tezcat. Yeah, Shitezcat, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. We can't hear you at all. There was a technical problem. Try again. All right, that's okay. Uh, Massey, we'll come back to you, Shitezcat. Massey, if you could just introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Uh, many blessings to you, Your Holiness. My name is Massey White Knight. The Supreme. First Nations Two-Spirited Entrepreneur from Alberta, Canada. My second spirit is Isis Rain. She is a dancer, a multi-nominated recording artist, and an anti-bullying advocate, also starring in the docuseries Queen of the Oil Patch. But today, citizen of the world, using my voice to champion sustainable ways to help Indigenous people across Canada, to not only survive, I'm honored to meet you. Canada. Uh, sorry, Jal, are you there? Unmute myself. Your Holiness, I'm really excited to be here again. My name is Emmanuel Jal. I performed at your concert in Syracuse in the United States, New York, and I met you there. And maybe to remind you, I'm from South Sudan, and I was born in a time when my country was at, was at war. I became a refugee and later became a child soldier, but happened to transform my life. Now I'm an entrepreneur, a musician, and activist. Well, I have a simple question, Your Holiness. In 1959, you experienced the trauma of becoming a refugee in India because of the military occupation of Tibet, you are forced to leave everything behind as millions of children, men and women are today, to survive hunger, war, or in my, uh, environmental collapse. After six decades, you are one of the oldest refugees in the world. Your holiness, my question is this, how did you overcome the trauma of life in exile. Now, uh, since we uh, are as a become a refugee, But I think mentally, emotionally, uh, Tibet and China and Mongolia, these three nations, historically, very close to each other. Uh, then uh, the seventh century Tibetan king, Mary with Chinese princes and a lot of help for uh, promotion of Buddhism because China, China emperor already Buddhist. So uh, basically good relation, but mainly now here we use Gammar 
red China. So the political reason, the totalitarian system, that the causes of problem. Uh, and they, then the, some narrow-minded Chinese communist leader, they consider Tibetan culture uh, is source of separation. So they trying to eliminate Tibetan unique Buddhist culture. Uh, so these are the uh, real causes of this problem. In 1954, I went to China on the invitation, Chinese government. Then I met Chairman Mao Zedong and many party leaders. They said, I very much impressed. Even I want to join Chinese Communist Party. Uh, then uh, some of my friends say, no hurry, no hurry. So at that time, you see, as a communist, communist thinking, working class people, uh, and entire human working class people. Uh, so there is some kind of oneness of all working class people on this planet. So these are uh, a good, good part. But then after, after Chairman Mao Zedong, uh, even within the party, they, how say, uh, the concept of my power, my power, like that. So that creates problem. So we escaped from Tibet. Uh, then immediate cause, Chinese, or say the uh, suppression, uh, violently. That's the immediate cause. Then I escape. But still, after we reach India, we are not seeking separation or independence. We very much want to remain within the People's Republic of China. So the Chinese word, Gung Ho Go, Gung Ho Gung Ho Go, Gung Ho means United Nation. So we uh, still, you see, want to remain with that uh, federation. Problem is, you see, too much emphasis on power and a totalitarian system. That's wrong. Even Chinese people themselves also, you see, want more freedom. Like that. So, uh, you see, we uh, decided formally we are not seeking separation or independence, but some kind of uh, middle way. So, among Tibetan, some people criticize about my way of approach, but basically, people. Uh, agree. So these are basically the sense of oneness of humanity. And uh, our neighbor, big neighbor, China, we have to live side by side as much better or uh, live harmoniously, peacefully. Then the, the, the or say, Rather, sort of, we Tibetan, they Chinese, and then you see always some negative feeling. Is no benefit to both, like that. So. Hmm? But then we escaped to India. Then Pandit Nehru, since 56 Buddha Janjis celebration, uh, 
we develop a very close link. So, from Lhasa, uh, things really become very, very dangerous. Even my own life, you see, there is danger. So we escaped. So as soon as Indian border reached, I met some old my Indian friend, Indian officials. You know. uh, then uh, I, I met uh, Pandit Nehru, and Nehru, you see, organized uh, so they, uh, I think very sympathetically uh, Tibetan refugee community. And then most important is our education. So we have our own separate Tibetan language. So I asked Indian Pandit Nehru, we need special school because Tibetan, we have uh, our own language written language, like that. So, uh, Nehru, tremendous of help. And then please, now this Dharmasala, what Nehru choose? You see, your permanent residence is Kangra Dharmasala is much suitable. Uh, so, in the, now, till now, I'm the, the guest of Indian government. So, over 60 years, uh, one way, I'm a refugee. One way, a guest of Indian government. Then all Tibetan here are refugee uh, about Kuzuri. 60? 150,000. 100,000. 100,000. We're very happy. We have right to preserve our own culture. And then, with the help of Indian government, we re-establish most important sort of religious institution, like uh, not just institution, uh, but like uh, the college. So, since 8th century, Nalendra master, uh, Shandar Rikshita, he invited to Tibet to introduce Buddhism. Now, he himself from Nalanda. So, Nalanda Buddhist tradition, we extensively use logic. The Shandar Rishida himself, great logician and philosopher. So, he introduced uh, Buddhism according Nalanda tradition in Tibet. So we, because of this sort of knowledge, you see, we always thinking reason, reason, not just the faith. So that immense help. So eventually, uh, we develop now uh, contact with various different religious uh, tradition, uh, people, religious people, and particularly scholars. And then uh, later, including scientists, uh, you see, we have, since we always see, use uh, so the analytical way thinking, so we also, you see, have very close sort of contact with scientists. So as a matter of fact, in our college, monastery college, also now introduce study science, like that. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, if we not become refugee, still in Tibet, then our mind may be a little narrow-minded. Since came to India, is a <laughs> opportunity to meet many people, including scientists. So anyway, very helpful. We have a Nalanda tradition. There is potential to investigate everything, not believe. So therefore, uh, 
I think uh, some my friend even used to say, since Dalai Lama came to India, free country, uh, uh, serving Buddha Dharma is much effective, much wider than remain inside Tibet in Potala, more ceremony way. <laughs> I think as a refugee, I myself feel I become more practical person. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, uh, Your Holiness. Thank you, Joe. Uh, we have a bit more time left for a couple more questions, uh, Your Holiness. I'd like to introduce you to, again, uh, Massey White Knife. Uh, and he'll bring his question to you now at this time. Massey. Massey, did you hear me? Yes, sorry, I had it on mute. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Your Holiness, my indigenous ancestors lived in peace, caring for the land and each other until we were assimilated and stripped of our homes and our land. They share teachings about love, respect, courage, honesty, wisdom, humility, and truth for hundreds of years. Your Holiness, my question is this. Do you think that with these teachings alone are sufficient today to heal humanity and the earth? Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think native people, uh, over a thousand years, you see, our way of life is very much close with nature uh, because our life entirely depends on nature. Uh, uh, and later, technology, and sometimes, you see, uh, for for temporary technology can overcome or uh, can do more uh, regardless of nature. But now, uh, ultimately, uh, we, uh, we are a uh, sentient being who uh, depend on nature. So our thinking, uh, our close relation with nature is very essential, very important. And sometimes because of technology, we develop some kind of unrealistic expectation. We can do everything. But ultimately, we still, you see, uh, depend on nature. So this ancient nation. You see, you have very good tradition, uh, close relation with nature, respect to nature. So that, uh, I think, very useful. So sometimes people who too much uh, believe technology, then finally, we are part of the oh, we, we We heavily depend on the nature of the planet. So, Changdeng Tao Song Zheng Yi Ma Sao Sun Ha Dab Zhe Nang, Mi Tu Ji Ji Ni Tu Ji Niang Ni Chai Ji Zuo Da Sa Yi, Kuo Lan Di Niang Ba Su Ji Shi Lab Zhe Zhe Nita. You see, uh, preservation of our own tradition alone not sufficient. Now, world changing, human population increasing, 
And now important climate condition also changing. So uh, besides our own thousand year old tradition, respect to nature, uh, then also according now new change, you see this technology like the wind, wind power or, yeah. and the solar system. These are very important. Uh, not using coal or fossil. fossil. Or, so uh, uh, now we, uh, we, we should pay more attention about uh, <coughs> environment. That's very important. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Your Holiness. Um, we have a time for a couple more questions and then introduction from Shutezkat. Uh, Raheen Fatima, if you could bring your question to Your Holiness now, we'd appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. It's, it's such an honor being here. Um, and only if somebody told me when I was reading His Holiness's um, you know, Time Magazine that I would be here three years uh, from when I was doing that, it's, it's an honor. I'm Sergin from Pakistan and my question to you, Your Holiness, you have often called out to my generation, encouraging us to engage in a compassion revolution. My question is this, at our age, would you say you were also a revolutionary? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, since my childhood, uh, I very much sort of uh, interest about science, about technology. Uh, then, uh, when I was in China, when I met Chairman Mao Zedong, uh, many Chinese officials who observed me. Uh, uh, then Chairman Mao Zedong told me, your thinking is very scientific. And then finally Chairman Mao Zedong expressed to me, religion is opium. <laughs> so that of course shows I'm Dalai Lama. So something religious figure but Chairman Mao Zedong have the sort of trust told me religion is opium. So Chairman Mao Zedong, uh, I think, uh, seems to see, trust me as a revolutionary, like that. Uh, so when Chairman Mao Zedong see, told me, looking at my eye, religion is opium. I feel uncomfortable, but I hide my eye uh, in order to make a note <laughs> like that. <laughs> I think I can say Mao Zedong, very old, experienced person. I'm very young, but I can cheat him. <laughs> Meantime, the socialism I really like socialism. Uh, I'm socialist. Uh, between capitalism and socialism, I prefer socialism is much better. Uh, socialism with individual freedom, then very good. But Chinese socialism uh, without individual freedom, everything controlled, that's too much. Okay. Your Holiness, <clears throat> we have two more quick questions for you. Two more questions, and then Shutezkat will introduce himself, and then Sophia will have her closing comments. Stephanie Benedetto will have a question for you now, Your Holiness. Your Holiness, you say you are a professional at laughter. Just today, my five-year-old son, Jacob, made his younger brother, Jeremy, 
laugh and giggle uncontrollably. It was beautiful to see and it warmed my heart as a mother. Your Holiness, my question is this, how do you maintain joy and laughter despite the world's suffering? That's <clears throat> mainly uh, beside my uh, the worldly sort of concept, as I mentioned earlier, oneness of humanity, and we have to live together. And then beside that, I, as a Buddhist monk, a particularly follower of Nalanda tradition, I practice daily altruism. So as soon as I wake up thinking altruism and combine with certain uh, the, uh, Nalanda sort of a philosophical view, things are interrelated, interdependent, no absolute. So these uh, two concepts really brings me inner peace. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, normal practical way is a problem create uh, there are m many other people uh, the actual circumstances also create a problem then among that uh, you yourself you say should keep peace of mind happy mind that's good you see uh, worry and not just to demoralize, but worry, thinking how to overcome these things. Uh, but at the same time, you yourself, uh, some Buddhist sort of, uh, as I mentioned earlier, altruism, and you see the uh, interconnectedness. Uh, interconnectedness, these things. So, you know, so, because of the problem, if I myself used to worry and it's silly, <laughs> that worry, uh, uh, any help to reduce this problem, uh, and full enthusiasm, and try to share more people with a smile is much better. <laughs> Sometimes, you see, among Tibetan deities, deity, uh, some are very wrathful, some are very peaceful. I prefer peaceful deity rather than wrathful deity. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. We have uh, one more question followed by an introduction by Shuteskat. Uh, again, an honor to introduce to you Buffy, Buffy St. Marie. Thank you. There seems to be no way to speed up the ripening of an apple, even if we increase the amount of sun on it. Likewise, your Holiness, is there any way or any need to speed up the ripening of another person? Or is each person in the world ripening at his or her own pace, no matter what others do? Yes, we human beings, oh. since we born, we learn uh, compassion, sense of caring of other from our mother. Uh, some scientists say we are social animal. So uh, any social animal by nature, by birth, is a sense of concern of their own community. 
So uh, that's our basic nature. And then more sort of what's it, the explanation, om heartedness, it's a source of inner peace. Uh, it's the, the antidote of anger uh, and jealousy or uh, fear. So therefore, uh, every people, even animal, uh, smiling face, even dogs appreciate. Angry face, even dogs sometimes also run away. <laughs> so we human beings, if you remain uh, anger, suspicion, distrust, and face, angry face, uh, then nobody loves you. Inner peace, with inner peace, more compassionate mind, and the smiling, then more friend. <laughs> so these are common sense, common sense, think. So we, uh, as a Buddhist, usually we say, uh, Enter mother sentient being. We consider mother more compassionate, so more important. We never say father sentient being. <laughs> so by nature, mother is the source of compassion. Your own life uh, with mother's milk. So we dearest and mother uh, see, from childhood as an example of uh, compassion. Father not, my own mother, very, very kind, very compassionate, and my father, not like that. <laughs> so we usually say mother sentient being, we never say father sentient being. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you, Buffy. Uh, Shuteskat, uh, please, uh, looking forward to your introduction. Thank you. Piali Nimitzlefalos, greetings, Your Holiness. I greet you. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your laughter. My name is Shuteskat Tonatiu. My people are the Mexica people, the indigenous peoples of Mexico Tenochtitlan, of Mexico City. I work as an artist and an organizer at the intersection of climate justice and indigenous sovereignty. And I believe that the ways in which we will build our future are when we commit ourselves to our collective liberation so that all of our peoples can be free and we can imagine and build a more beautiful and bright world. Thank you for your space, for your time, for everyone's questions. Thank you, Shuteskat. Uh, just wanted to say quickly, it was a real honor, uh, Your Holiness, to be uh, moderating this evening. It's been a, a long time coming for us in preparation. Thank you for making this a, a possibility for all of us. I'd like to bring back Sophia with closing remarks, and thank you all for being with us this evening. Thank you, Your Holiness, for your most meaningful insights. Thank you, Professor Sandong Rinpoche and Koa Nguyen for your unfailing support that made this event possible. My heartfelt thanks to your office and team, as well as to One Better World Collective and all participants for their dedication. In these challenging times, we may fall, we may suffer and even break. But by being mindful of your words, we'll rise, we'll heal, and finally, we'll overcome. Your Holiness, your example of altruistic love in the service of humanity is our source of inspiration, courage, and hope. May we always think love, speak love, act 
love and live love. May we stand up for human rights and human dignity in your country, Tibet, and wherever they are suppressed. May we always be the love we want to see in the world. Thank you, Your Holiness. Please take care and stay well. We look forward to meeting you in person. Tukchinta, Katinche, Your Holiness. See you again. And we all, human brothers, sisters, you see, we all have the responsibility to develop happy humanity, mm. peaceful world. So please uh, uh, think, you each individual, you all, you all have same as responsibility and the same potential to make a small contribution. Even you see, you share with your friend, uh, two friends, uh, 10 friends, or 20 friends, and then 100 friends. That's the way uh, to do. And pr pray or the effort, you see, change whole world once impossible. You see, we have to work step by step like that. Thank you very much. Thank you.